Hey guys, um, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Chelsea and I'm a full-time reseller. And today I am doing a challenge with my friend Macy over at Blue Consignment and we are trying to see who can reach 600 listings in their Poshmark closet. I don't know if it's really first, but just we're both challenging each other to reach 600 listings. It's something I've been trying to do for a long time and I keep selling stuff, so it's not getting there. So anyway, let me see what my current count is so we can see how many listings we have to get to to hit 600. So it's like 550 the last time I checked, but we will see where we're at now. So my posh stats, loading, loading. All right, I'm at 555 right now. So I have 45 listings to do, but during those times, some things could sell. So we will see um, what happens there. So anyway, we have two days to do this. So today and tomorrow, and preferably I would like to be over 600 by the time this challenge is done and be able to maintain that number. Um, we will see where I get, I do have a ton of stuff to list, so it shouldn't be a problem. Um, running out of inventory right in front of me here. I have like a big pile of shoes. I have a rack of clothes. I have some hard goods. So anyway, I think I'm going to get started with my hard goods. And as you can see here, my office space is a mess. So I'm going to clear off this desk and set up my photo setup for photographing hard goods, like shoes and small items. So I'm going to set that up and then we'll get started. So stay tuned if you want to see me list about 50 things. <laughs> All right. See you in a minute. So this is my fancy thingamabob for holding my receipts this year. Don't know really what it's called, but it's like what people have at restaurants where you just kind of like shove the receipt on it when you get when you get one. So anyway, it's gonna hold it in order for me this year. Yes, they'll have a hole in it, but at least they'll be organized. So <laughs> this is my solution. I'm gonna go put this somewhere else. Okay, so I got my space set up to photograph all of the hard goods. So let me show you kind of a close up of what I just did. Um, if you've watched my video about how to photograph shoes, you've probably already seen this, but if you haven't, let me show you. All right, so basically this is my setup. I have two poster boards here, one against the wall and then one on the table. And then I have my lights safe stationed so that way it really lights the area really well. So I kind of created like my own little light box. And then I keep my scale right here so I can weigh everything when I'm done, keeping it nice and close. So all I have to do is like spin in my chair, weigh it and um, set it to the side. I have all of these shoes to photograph. Um, I'm gonna get most of them done today. Some of them need a little more intense cleaning so I'll put those off. Um, I have all these purses, that big bag of stuff, some stuff sitting here. I have clothes but I'm gonna wait on that. I have some baskets, this really cute purse my sister-in-law got me to sell. Isn't that adorable? And then this bag of goodies. So I have plenty to list. This should definitely keep me busy for a while. So this is what I'm gonna do first. Okay, so I got my little space set up. Let me raise my chair a bit. And I like to photograph um, while sitting or just kind of um, standing up when I need to and then just kind of pivoting. So I grab my item, I photograph it, I put it down and I make sure to weigh it first too. So anyway, I hope you enjoy the time lapse of me photographing some stuff. Um, one thing I used to clean with that you might see me using is I use this Norwex cloth just to wipe down the shoes or I use some Lysol wipes, nothing really fancy. I've got my lint roller here and yeah, I'm gonna start with some of the shoes and then I'll move on to the hard goods. I'm just gonna photograph the shoes that don't really need any work today. Um, maybe another day I'll get to the ones that need some cleaning and stuff. I have some Uggs that have some like spots on them that need to be cleaned. I'm not going to deal with that today. I'm just going to try to do the fast listings. All right, so here we go.
Alright, so I just got a few shoes photographed and now I'm going to turn off the camera, save a little battery, I'll check back in with you when I get these shoes done. I probably have about 10 pair to do, so I'll check back in with you after that and then we're going to get into some hard goods. I got a lot of random fun stuff to list, so that will be fun. But anyway, I plan on just photographing stuff until either my phone dies or I get sick of it. So we will see what comes first. And then after that, I'm going to draft everything and then go ahead and list it. Um, and I'll probably do the same thing tomorrow. Um, yeah, so we'll just see how much we get done today. I'm going to just work as hard as I can. So anyway, right now it is one o'clock. I did get a later start today, so I'll probably have to take a lunch break here soon. But um, anyway, that's the status of what's going on. Okay, so I just finished photographing eight pairs of shoes and it is now 1.36 and I received a good reminder on why I don't source shoes very often. I just like spent a good 10 minutes scraping dirt off the footbed of a pair of Birkenstocks. Now I know these will sell, but like that's gross. That is not something I want to do with my time. So lesson learned, I will look much more closely at shoes before I buy them and not just be like enamored by the brand. I always sell Birkenstocks fast. Um, these will probably only sell for like 25 to $30 because they're not in perfect condition. But I mean, is it worth scraping dirt off the inside of a shoe? You let me know. <laughs> all right, so now I'm going to photograph a bunch of hard goods that I got. I mean, all kinds of random stuff, like a scrapbooking set, a music set, some yarn, <laughs> some um, St. Patrick's Day paper plates, a, what do you even call this thing, a maraca? So that's what I'm gonna be doing now. All right, let's get started. Um, so when I photograph stuff, like I said, I like to take pictures of, I don't know if I said this already, actually. I like to take pictures of my measurements so I don't have to write it down anywhere. That way it's just saved in my phone. And I try to weigh it right away. And then when I'm done with it, I put it away. So by the time I go to list something, it's already been put away in inventory. And all the information I need is in my pictures. So yeah, that being said, let's get some pictures of this music set. Alright, so that's done. I like selling hard goods because they're just so fast and easy to photograph. Sometimes I like to take pictures of stuff like this with like my little green plant. But I sure to, I'm always sure to make sure that the item I'm selling is actually the focus and only put that in the cover photo so people don't think that they're getting a free plant. With their purchase, you don't want to cause any confusion. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to work through this bag of random stuff and I'll check back with, in with you after I'm done and let you know how many stuff I got photographed. See you soon. All right, so I got another 12 things photographed. It's hard to believe that there's only 12 things that I'm selling in this bag huge bag full of hard goods and this is why primarily I sell mostly clothes because hard goods take up a lot of space like if this was 12 like shirts it would take up a lot less space than 12 hard good items but I got these super cheap so I will try to sell them and see how they do I'm kind of experimenting with hard goods now when I find them at the bins for a good price I'm just picking them up and giving it a shot so yeah I've got some more hard goods to list that are in the kitchen so I'm gonna go grab those there's some mugs and stuff and then I've got some ties and some baby clothes. So I'm going to work on that now and hopefully get my listings up soon. I think I'm just going to finish the hard goods and then go list this stuff and then I'll do the clothes tomorrow. So yeah, wish me luck. <laughs> People don't realize how much dust and dirt and grime builds up in these baskets. Yuck. Oh, yeah, I just got a splinter. Ugh. I think I got it out. Yikes. <laughs> so much excitement over here. 
All right, I am going to check back in with you when I get this stuff photographed. So I'll see you in a minute. Bye bye. Okay, I just got eight more things photographed. It was like baskets and a few bags. And now I'm moving on to ties. So I've got this whole pile of ties and I'm just going to get these listed. I got these from the Goodwill outlet and I like picking up ties because they're so lightweight and I can normally get, I don't know, five to $15 out of them, depending on the tie. I mean, I've actually sold a, a tie for around $60 before. It was a Hermes tie. I don't even know if I'm pronouncing that right. I'm not super bougie, so I didn't know. I didn't even know it was a good brand until I brought it home. I just thought it looked nice. So anyway, I'm going to photograph these and what I do with ties is I roll them, like I roll the back. Do, 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 do. So I roll this up and yeah, till about right there. And then I put it down on my mat and I just kind of like pull out, pull out that part a little bit. So it kind of lays um, where part of it's rolled up and then part of it is um, hanging out so you can tell what it is. But anyway, it makes for a really good picture. And then I get a really close up of the pattern of the tie and I make a collage and it looks like this one it's done. So I found that this way of displaying ties is really the best for me. And I always try to get measurements of the tie because I can't tell you how many times I've had people ask me how wide the tie is. So I just provide a picture of that as well. And then the general length of the tie. It um, saves me time on the front end if I just measure it now and weigh it now to not have to deal with that later. But normally ties only weigh around two ounces, so it's not a big deal if I don't get the exact weight. And I forget, because sometimes I forget to weigh things and it's kind of annoying, but ties, it doesn't really matter. They're very lightweight. So anyway, I'm gonna get these ties listed now or photographed now. All right, checking back in, I got 10 more things listed, or I'm sorry, I got 10 more things photographed. It's 310. I did take a break to do some housework and stuff and tidy up some things that I needed to get done. But um, I got all these little things photographed. There's like some ties in here, some, some bibs, um, a little mini skirt, some shoes, a hat. Um, I did, um, yeah, so that's what I've done. <laughs> Not a ton. I'm going to work on some purses now and then I've got like this bag of like Disney stuff that I'm going to photograph. Um, so when I photograph purses, I do two different things. I do a flat lay of them and make sure to get like the inside and all of the like close up details. But then I'll also photograph the purse on my mannequin so people can get an idea of like compared to a person, what size it would be. Now if I was dressed a little nicer, I would model the purses, but um, I don't think I'm going to model today. I'm just not, not in the mood. <laughs> But anyway, I'm gonna get this done now, and yeah, I'll check back in when I'm done. <laughs> Purse time. Okay, so I just finished those purses. There was four purses. Um, one was a tote bag and then three purses. So anyway, I finished photographing all of those, and I think I'm gonna call it quits for the day for photographing. I got all of my hard goods, um, flat lay items done. So I'm going to just call it a day now. And this is the amount of items I photographed. I'm not really sure, but I'll put it here when I edit because I'll know by then. But anyway, I am going to go and put all of these pictures into drafts on my Poshmark. And then I will show you how I list them, give you some ideas about what I do. Anyway, I'll see you in a minute. <laughs> Bye. One thing I wanted to say is that whenever I finish photographing, whether it's clothes or hard goods or whatever, I always try to tidy up my workspace. So the next day when I come back, I actually want to work. There's nothing worse than coming into a dirty workspace where there's stuff everywhere and it's just disorganized and the stuff that you were working with yesterday is all sitting out. So the next step is actually, before I start drafting all of these things, is to put them away. So I'm going to put them into their inventory storage space, or at least put them in the room where they need to be put away. And maybe I'll put them away later tonight, but get them out of this room. So that way I have a nice clean workspace to come to tomorrow. And I've got a little Roomba vacuum cleaner. I'm going to send loose in here because cleaning all those shoes sent some dirt on the floor. And 
you know, let's get it clean. So that way tomorrow when I come back in here, I'm going to be excited to work and looking forward to working in this room. So yeah, I'm going to just set it up the way it was before. So that way it'll be ready for tomorrow. So I hope that tip helps you out. <laughs> All right, folks, welcome to my office. So I like to do a lot of my drafting and listing right here on my couch in my living room next to my fluffy cat who is here sleeping. And I have a coffee to help keep me um, busy. <laughs> so this is the Rise Nitro Cold Brew Coffee with oat milk. And yeah, I don't drink dairy, so that's why I always have alternate milks. But anyway, I am getting ready to draft all of my listings and get them into Poshmark so I can list from my computer. I like to draft from my phone just because I don't have to transfer them twice. If I were to upload them to my computer, I would have to upload them through Google because of Apple phone and not an Apple computer. So I'd have to upload them from Google Photos and it just takes a while. So if I just upload them from my phone, do all the editing that needs to be done, any collages that need to be made from my phone, it does save a lot of time. So I'm gonna do that now and cuddle up with all my fuzzy blankets and watch some YouTube videos. Yay. This is kind of my favorite part of the process. <laughs> the part where I get to sit on the couch and relax because even though this is still work, it's definitely much more relaxing. So here we go. I got a lot done. I had to get some chores done, some things around the house. I got dinner in the oven. And right now I have one hour to list my drafts to get started on them. And I know it's late, it's 6.30, but I have like 46 or 43 drafts I can work on. So I was just really quick gonna show you what those look like. I have them all um, kind of laid out in my phone. Everything has been edited. All my cover photos, I brighten them and so they're ready to go. And then I also put the measurement photo, not the measurement photo, the photo of the weight of the item in my drafts as well. So when I go to list it, I can put the weight right into my spreadsheet. So I have that information for eBay and Mercari. So then I'll list all this stuff to Poshmark. And after it's all listed to Poshmark, I'll upload it into Vendu so my VA can do the rest. So basically all I have to do is list the stuff into Poshmark and it'll get cross-listed to eBay and Mercari within a few days with my VA's help. So without further ado, I'm gonna go see how many listings I can get done before dinner is ready. I'll check back in with you later tonight to let you know what I got done. And whatever I don't finish tonight, no stress, I'm gonna do tomorrow. All right, see you soon. Hey guys, so it is now 8.45 p.m and I'm done, I'm done for the day. So I um, got six things listed before dinner. So in about 50 minutes, I got six things listed. And then after that I ate dinner and then I put away all my inventory that I photographed today. Um, I'll put a picture here of how much I had to put away. And I have like one closet where I store like all the hard goods and hanging items and just some overflow inventory. So that all went in that closet and I had to like play Tetris to get it all to fit, but it fits. And I'm hoping it'll sell quick so that space will not be taken up for long. With hard good items, I really do accept offers because I want them to move fast because they take up more space. So anyway, I'm glad that those are all listed and well, they're not all listed. I'm glad that they're all put away and they're inventoried and everything's taken care of. So tomorrow morning when I wake up and I feel fresh and I have energy again, I can get all of that stuff listed. And that should put me right under 600 listings once all of the stuff that I got photographed today is listed. And then I hope I can get at least a few things photographed tomorrow after I list all of those things so I can hit 600 listings. And I really think I can do it. Today was just a big photography day getting rid of all of those hard goods. I've been accumulating those for a while and this room was starting to look like a bomb site. <laughs> so I'm so glad those things are listed and they're out of sight now. So that way my office looks nice and clean and organized. And I'm currently drying up some laundry right now. Um, I'm washing my rug that go, all of my rugs that go in here and just getting this room nice and clean for tomorrow. So yeah, I will catch up with you tomorrow and hopefully we can hit 600 listings by tomorrow night. Um, anyway, hopefully Macy's doing well too. You guys make sure you check out her video after you're done with this one to see how things are going for Macy over at Blue Consignment. All right, see you later. Bye. 
Hey guys, so it's day two of this listing challenge with Macy and I have listed 10 items so far today. So, hmm, it's not focusing very well, but I've listed 10 items today so far and I spent about an hour listing this morning before I got ready and wanted to show my face on camera. So I got that done and now I have about, what, 30 something drafts left. So I really wanna just pump through those, kinda not try to overthink these too much. I have a habit of overthinking things. Like I feel like I have to look up all the comps and know everything about an item, when in reality you don't always need to do that unless it's like a higher end vintage item, then maybe you should put in that extra time. So we got a few things that I know are worth the extra time. Like I have, a, I have a carpet bag that is vintage and I know it's worth something. So I wanna do a little research on that. But then the other items I feel like are pretty common items that I can just list quickly. So anyway, that's my strategy. I am going to go back to listing. Um, it's almost noon. So I definitely wanna power through at least an hour of listings before I check back in with you guys. So wish me luck that I'll get a lot done and I'll check back in with you in just a bit. Bye. Hey, checking back in, it is 1.20 and I have 24 listings up now and I'm 17 listings away from hitting my goal of 600 listings <laughs> unless something sells soon then I'll have a few more listings. I did sell one thing so far today on Mercari out of all places. Mercari is trying to prove me wrong. I was, I just mentioned in like a previous video that I was thinking about getting rid of Mercari. And right now I have five sales on Mercari that I need to ship out today. Mine is blown. Now that is over the course of a long weekend. So it's not like it sold overnight, all five of those items, but still that's good for Mercari. I just can't believe that happened. So moral of the story here is if you're unhappy with the platform, complain about it on the internet and maybe good things will happen. <laughs> anyway. Um, I wanted to share one of my listing hacks that I use, and this is controversial. You let me know down below what you think of this. Um, this may cause confusion to other poshers. However, when I see other people do this to me, I don't think anything of it because I just think, ha ha, I see what they're doing. Okay, so when I look up comparable listings in a store, let's say I found something that I'm thinking about buying, so I look up comparable listings. Well, first I you know, just look it up, look at what the current listing prices are, but then I go to the sold listings. If I see a sold listing of the exact item that I have, I used to just screenshot it because I'm like, oh, that's helpful information. I can hang on to that and look it up later. But what I started doing within the past year or two is I actually like the sold item. Now I realize that the posture gets notified when I like it. So I hope I'm not annoying anyone, but, um, I mean, I get like some sold things all the time and I just think, okay, maybe someone's doing what I'm doing. But anyway, what it does is it saves that listing, saves that comp for me so I can quickly access it later in my likes on Poshmark. So for example, these shorts that I got retail arbitrage the other day, I saved that comparable listing and right there is a stock photo that I don't have to look up. All I have to do when I go to list is go on my computer and look at my likes. I can pull that stock photo. I can borrow um, some phrasing from her listing. And yeah, I do this with a lot of items. So here's some mod cloth dresses I picked up the other day that I liked. Um, these mini Tonka shoes that I have, I liked. So just lots of different listings that I have in my Poshmark closet. As soon as I found them in the store, I just liked that. So it saves me a step when I go to list later, I can just pull up those liked items and take what I like out of their listing. Maybe they have a stock photo that I want. I never just copy and paste directly and just use exactly what they said. I always change up the wording a little bit. I don't want to plagiarize, but um, think about it. On eBay, you can use sell similar and you get all of their information that they did in the drop downs by using their sell similar option. Well, on Poshmark, they don't have that exact option, but if you like something, you can save that for later. Another tip is if you are on eBay and you find a sold listing that is exactly what you are looking for, you can just um, scroll down and click sell similar and it'll save it as a draft. So that way when you go to list it, you already have a draft with all of those drop downs filled in to save you a little bit of time into listing on eBay. So those are some hacks that I use 
you let me know what you think about it if you think that's annoying for other poshers or if you think it's a good hack either way I use it and I think it saves me some time on the back end when it comes to listing because I've already looked up those items why look it up again so yeah that's this little trick that I use to make my listing process a little faster all right back to listing I have 17 items to go I don't think I have that many drafts but I'm gonna finish up the drafts that I have um, before I do that though, I do have a massive amount of shipping to get done right now. This is all of my shipping from the long weekend. So I do need to get that done. That could take up to an hour to get done. So I'll check up with you when I'm done with that, let you know what time it is and then get back to listing. All right. See you soon. Okay. It is 3:30, and I just got all my shipping done. I have these two big Ikea bags full of shipping stuff that I just finished packaging and I left a note for my mail carrier and the mailbox for him to come pick this up. He told me if ever I forget to schedule a pickup, which is like all the time, just to leave a note for him in the mailbox and he'll come by and pick it up. And he's always been so nice about it. So that's what I did today. And he's going to come on by and pick this up. So I'm really happy about that. But man, oh, did I have a time doing shipping today? I messed up a few things on eBay and didn't charge enough for shipping which is okay because a lot of times I make a little bit of money on shipping. And then with Mercari sales, I was trying to ship some stuff on my own through pirate ship. And I just didn't make as much on the items as I wanted to after shipping and stuff. So anyway, I think I'm just going to be using Mercari shipping from now on. Not that I have anything against pirate ship. I think they're great. They really save you money. But when I receive an offer, sometimes I don't consider the fact that the shipping hasn't been deducted from it and I may accept a lower offer. So anyway, I have to be more mindful of that, but it's okay. I still made a profit on everything that I sold. It's just maybe not the profit I wanted to. So gonna get back to listing now. Oh yeah, my washing machine stopped working and we just had to buy a new washer. So that was fun. Um, we just ordered one online through Lowe's and yeah, there goes my weekend profits. <laughs> easy come easy go all right so I'm still here listing it is almost five o'clock and I'm not exactly sure where I'm at right now I think I have about 10 or 15 more listings to go but anyway I just listed this bag and I had to do some research on it to know whether or not I was listing it at a fair price so my tip for you is don't just look on Poshmark for comps because I mean depending on where you sell if you sell elsewhere, you know, you might already be doing more research, but if you only sell on Poshmark, make sure you're looking on Google for comps. So I like to type in the name on Google or on eBay. So I was able to look on eBay and realize that this same purse has sold on eBay within the past 90 days, one sold for 129 and one sold for 140. Now those are a little bit bigger than mine, but I'm starting a little higher. Um, at 125 for mine. And then there's one listed right now at 129.99. So I was able to look at their listings and gather some information for mine. But yeah, this is another example of just not looking in one place for comps. Sometimes it pays to spend a few more minutes looking elsewhere for comps, like, you know, on eBay or even on Google to make sure you know enough about the brand you're selling. So another thing was this brand was extremely hard to read. The logo was like in cursive and it was just difficult to read. So I just typed it in letter by letter and sure enough, it comes up. So anyway, just a tip for you to make sure you check your comps because you might have something really good. I got this bag from the bins for around a dollar. So I'm pretty excited to see this bag sell. So yeah. Also, my coworkers are extremely lazy. They're just sitting here, sleeping, doing absolutely nothing. I mean, I guess they're here for moral support. I'll give them that, but they have not listed one thing. Cosmo, have you helped me list? All right, guys, it is 6.30 and I am at 5.96, I think. Hold on. Yes, I'm at 596 listings right now. So what I'm currently doing, because it is dark outside and I don't feel like photographing more items, is I remembered that at the bottom of my Mercari closet, I have some items that are not cross-listed. 
So I'm uploading all of these pictures. I'm saving them to my computer and then I'm uploading them into Vendu so I can cross list them to eBay and Poshmark, thus getting my Poshmark numbers up to 600. So this is my little last stitch effort to hit 600 by the end of the night because yeah, I just, I don't want to go photograph new stuff right now. I just finished listing everything I photographed yesterday. These pictures are not bad. So I figured let's just use them. So I'm getting very close guys. I'm hoping I can check in in just a bit and tell you that I made it to my 600 listing goal. So close yet so far. <laughs> See you soon. All right guys, I did it. <laughs> I hit 600 listings. It is 7.15 PM and I listed 45 items today. Whew, I think that's a new record for me. I think my previous record was 40. Today I got 45 listed and it was exhausting guys. At the end there, I got a little desperate and I found some listings on Mercari that I had listed back before Poshmark had a home goods section. So I had some older listings on Mercari that I was able to cross list over to Poshmark. And I did have to write like, update my descriptions because back then I wasn't writing detailed descriptions. So it did take a little bit of work, but I just didn't feel like photographing other things. So anyway, I am at officially at 600 listings. Here's my proof right here. <laughs> and yeah, it says the value of the items I listed today alone was $1,167. So let's say, um, let's put that $1,167 divided by two. So if you divide that by two, that's $583. And here's what I'm thinking. That would be the lowest amount I would get if all these items sold because 20% um, Poshmark fees. And let's say the max discount I usually give is around 30%. So at the very least, I'm going to make around $583. So I am happy with around $600 profit for my work today. Yesterday I listed about six items. So let's say I profit a total of six to $700 for all of the work I did. Then I am happy with that. Now, a lot of the items I decided to list um, were more difficult items to list because I listed, I listed a bunch of home goods and hard goods and shoes and things that take a little bit more research. If I had been listing like tops and dresses and pants, I feel like those are a little easier for me to list because I, I'm so used to listing them. You just describe the item and then I say, look at the photo for measurements and it, it's pretty basic, not as much research. I feel like the stuff I listed today, I had to do research on almost everything. So I was kind of doing the math and how much time I put into listing all of these items. And I guessed around 14 hours. So let's go back to those numbers that I shared with you just a minute ago. So if I took that $891 and I divided by the 14 hours that I spent working, that's a little over $63 an hour. Now I did spend time sourcing these items, but I did that on my day off. The other day, um, my mom was in town and we wanted to go sourcing together. And you guys, I love sourcing. It's fun for me. It is my relaxation. So we probably spent a couple more hours finding all of these items that I listed today. So yeah, not bad for over $50 an hour if you wanna look in terms of hours. But guys, let me tell you, this is not sustainable for me. I am not the type of person that can list 45 items a day. This was a really fun challenge and I would definitely be up for doing this again sometime soon. If you're interested in joining in the challenge with me next time, comment down below and we'll try to include you. And yeah, <laughs> it was really fun. So I wanna keep kind of maintain 600 listings if at all possible. Um, tomorrow I'm going to work on listing this rack of clothes, um, that I didn't get to because I didn't need to. I had enough hard goods to get me through up to 600 listings. So let me show you the things that I listed just for accountability's sake. So you can see what I've spent all of this time listing. All right. So here we go. I cross listed these Cricut cartridges, um, and those light switches. I have no idea why these girls Hudson shorts are showing up here. Uh, when I logged into Vendu, it said relisted, but I didn't relist those today. I relisted those earlier this week. So I don't know what the deal is there, but it doesn't change my numbers because it was already in my Poshmark closet. So anyway, um, this is one blouse that I, for some reason, forgot to list the other day. Um, when I was going through all of my listings for clothing, this got lost in the mix. So I was able to list that today. 
Um, this was another thing that was in Mercari that I had decided to relist into Poshmark was this Jeff Gordon ornament. And then the, all this other stuff I listed yesterday. I'm talking, guys, such random stuff that I listed. A tambourine, some beading wire, okay, um, a purse, an oval rattan basket, a 23-piece um, instrument set, um, some bronze finish shelving, okay, um, some Ray Dunn paper plates, um, some craft supplies, a game. Okay, so this this listing right here that says flaws, I put it as not for sale, so it did not count towards my listings, but I had to list this today because I sold a dress, and when I went to go package it up today, I noticed there was a flaw that I didn't disclose. So I took pictures of the flaws and made a new listing, and I tagged the person who bought the listing um, on that and put it in her bundle and we talk, we're just talking back and forth and how we're going to resolve these flaws. She says she still wants it but she was wondering if she could get a discount so I told her to cancel the sale and I could relist it and sell it to her for less and hopefully she follows through with that so we can just make everybody happy here. I don't want her to have something that's flawed. If she paid $65 for this, for $65 it should be in better condition than it was. So anyway, that's why that is there. And then, I, I mean, yarn, Christmas ornaments, um, ties, uh, a mug, just so much random stuff, guys. It is funny, the things I listed today. So yeah, lots of really fun stuff that I listed. Um, I think my two favorite things that I listed were these Maleficent, um, it was like some Disney ear horns, a bag, and eye mask. These seem to be pretty valuable. I sh shot for the moon here at $60. I definitely am willing to take an offer on that. But um, the tote bag alone was going for like $15.20 on eBay. The mask itself was going for $15. And then I saw other horns like that selling for around $30. So I just decided to, you know, price it at $60, see what happens. I'll definitely lower the price later if needed. And then my other favorite listing was this crossbody carpet bag and I, I did some research on that I told you about earlier. So yeah, I had fun listing all the stuff because there was so much variety and different things like this vintage bag which was gorgeous. But it was just a lot of research because when I list vintage things I like to know a little bit about them, do my research, and it just takes a little while to list vintage items. So anyway, that being said, I am done with this challenge. If you made it this far to the end, thank you. You are the real MVP. Thanks for watching. Please comment down below and just, you know, let me know where you are in your active listings on Poshmark. Are you past 600? Are you under 600? Let me know how many active listings you have. I officially have 600 as of now. I could sell something in the next five minutes. That's why I wanted to film this really quick so I could celebrate my 600 listings. But um, I'm going to try to stay in that general range and keep consistently listing so I can maintain 600 listings. So guys, have a great day. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up, comment down below, and if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider subscribing. Thank you so much for watching. Bye! <sighs> I'm exhausted.